people have asked me, you know, what, so what's the benefit? What's the difference between mm. me just going off and homeschooling on my own or joining your school? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the biggest difference is that community mm -hmm. that you're not, I mean, yes, you'll have homeschooling communities, but sometimes they can be very tricky mm -hmm. to navigate because the diversity is so much. Yeah. So whoever's running the program would set the boundaries, right? Right. <laughs> and, and set the expectations. And if it's in a church that you don't attend, whether, you know, because they're using that facility. And again, you get into this. It is that that fluctuating, like somebody teaching yoga and you don't want your children to learn yoga and, mm -hmm. you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing you don't have to ascribe to any one particular thing. Right. But right. here the community is, we are a community of people who think differently, mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. each other regardless of our own opinions. Right. Right. And have our records out of the system and sent to the school. Cause that is one of the big perks mm. is that people who have had their kids in the public system. And so their all their information is in the school mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. keep getting harassed when they're homeschooling mm. individually right, right and because the school system uh when you pull your child out of a school they lose 15 to twenty five thousand dollars a year right because we have a per student funding model right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so those schools the, it affects their pocketbook when you take right. your kids out of school but when you transfer them to a private school mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. still lose the money but they don't distrust you. Right. right. He, so here, the negative mistrust of the term homeschooling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is is very, it, it creates a, a, an environment where people feel intimidated. Right. Because they're under a microscope of somebody saying, hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Fortunately, in Ontario, we have a law that, sadly, nobody in the school system is ever taught what the Education <laughs> right. Act. Seriously, they do not teach a course in teacher's college on the Education Act. Right. This is right. something that blows my mind. <laughs> Why would you go into an industry and not know the laws that encompass it? Yeah. So we have Section 21-2A of the Education Act in Ontario that states a person is excused, not may be excused. Mm -hmm. You're not getting permission. Mm -hmm. Right. Is excused from attendance at school if satisfactory instruction is being provided at home or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. critical to this is there is no definition of satisfactory instruction. <laughs> right, right. The the ministry curriculum is not the default mm -hmm, mm -hmm. education pattern. It is not considered the bar that all satisfactory instruction is judged by right. or, you know, looked at. Satisfactory instruction might be different for a Hasidic Jewish family than an Amish family, than, uh, you know, an autistic child, a blind child, a deaf child, any, any child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. satisfactory instruction is going to be individual yeah. yeah there is no way to define it so they haven't defined it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when the school boards and the teachers think oh no this child should not be excused from attendance at school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would have to start a, a investigation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. led by somebody who's not employed by the school system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to investigate and determine whether satisfactory instruction is being provided or not. Mm. <laughs> However, the, when it goes to court, the, the, if it goes to court, which it used to go to court, but it doesn't anymore because of this, they were losing every case because mm -hmm. the, the onus was on the school boards to prove that the families were not providing satisfactory instruction. Right, right. Well, since there's no definition of satisfactory instruction, 
and they have no information about what the parents are doing and mm -hmm. they're not entitled to any information of right. what the parents are doing. They kept losing these cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the ministry finally said, whoa, we have to stop taking parents to court. <laughs> We're spending millions on legal fees that we don't need to and, and shouldn't have to. After a brief interruption. So the ministry said, stop taking families to court. Mm -hmm. And instead, they, they created this policy memorandum 131, mm. which says, if choosing to homeschool, a parent should notify the board. Mm -hmm. Now, you go to the, the Toronto District School Board's website, it says a parent must. Mm. But that's not the wording of the actual policy. Right. And right. policy is not law. Mm -hmm. So this policy applies to the school boards, is not a, applied to the parents. It is a, would you please tell us what you're doing with your children? Right. <laughs> Except they've decided to interpret it as, you must tell us what you're doing with your children. You must register because it's our responsibility to keep tabs on who's homeschooling. Right, right. In their job description, not in the law. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so this is where it now they're trying to surreptitiously or covertly get this information from mm. homeschooling families so that they can say, Hey, look, all these families have complied and provided a letter of intent to homeschool. They must acknowledge us as the authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that in the future, they may come a time when they do want to make it law. Right. And they have that proof and documentation. So that's why I, you know, I work with the Ontario Federation of Teaching Parents mm, to mm -hmm. try and help get this information out so that people know their rights. Right. right. And provide them the alternative of doing uh, a private school. We have others like it. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. There are they're few and far between. Right. But right. there are the options. And the Ontario government supports those options. Right. And I've created a right. document that I can send to you if, if you're interested that gives all that information. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.